if you are a geek, you have to find out. <laughs> yeah, enjoy yourself. This one? <laughs> no, it's reset. No, it's a reset. Okay. Oh, EGBs are slow. This is a classic one, EGB are slow. If you know some other uh, biases, trust we can discuss afterwards. So, I just did a following test. Glasses V2 yeah. with a servlet, and into a servlet I, in, I injected, not injected, I created a POJO, and on every call I invoke a POJO method. This was the test. And afterwards, I deployed the same class, SAEGB, and injected it into the servlet. So I had in one case, I had a POJO, and the same bytecode as EGB. So, and I measured the performance, and the problem was, it, there was no difference. So I measured and measured, and uh, then after one hour, I recognized a, a slight difference, and the difference was 3%. So there are 3% difference between POJO invocation and session bin invocation. And in worst case, the difference was about two milliseconds or something like this. So you can f forget two milliseconds completely in case you are accessing a database or something like this, yeah? It will be slower than two milliseconds, believe me, yeah? Even with MySQL, it will be slower. So, and yeah, in, I never, yeah, okay, in, in my whole consultant career, I had, I, had no, I had no problems with performance of EGB. I had always problems with performance of databases because of locking, uh, or replicating of, 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 of caches or something like this, but session beans were never slow. So I don't know from where it comes, but if you measure the performance, it is just great. Why? Because behind the scenes there is a POJO decorated with dynamic proxy, and the only difference is the overhead of the dynamic proxy. So this is, this is the overhead of having an EGB. Questions? How about memory consumption? Uh, yeah. Most applications in uh, WLS uh, 8, we had a constraint in operations to use 256 megabyte RAM. <laughs> and on, gl on Glassfish, uh, I use most 500. And um, on huge projects, we, if we have to, um, for instance, to cache everything in memory, we need more memory. But uh, I think there is almost no difference between EGB and POJOS because you have more instances. It depends how it works. If, you, if the application server uses dynamic proxies, you will get for one instance several proxies, so you, get, you need more memory. But if you are using OSGI Spring, this is the same story. They have to provide dynamic proxies. And if you're using aspects, so the bytecode gets extended. So you will, yeah, but you know, it is, I think there is no problem with memory either. And uh, it, uh, memory in Germany is at least cheap, you know. In media market, there is about, <laughs> Two gigabyte RAM is about 20 euros or something like this. <laughs> yeah, I know it, it's operations. But um, the issue is caching of JPA, and this is nothing with EGB3. So if you have a backend cache with Entity Manager or Hibernate, this is the, the memory hog. And uh, yeah, but yeah. Okay. If you have memory consumption, you should be lucky, but it's working something else. <laughs> but if it is too high, if it is too high, uh, I, all I do is just fire a profiler. So there is a um, NetBit, this perfect one is built in. If you like Eclipse, there is TPTP. It's a free one, but this, this is a really memory hog. If you fire up, you need a serious machine to, to test it with TPTP. Or your kit. Your kit in Eclipse is a commercial one, but it works pretty well. And, and this in the NetBit is perfect. This is like your kit, but free. It is built in an Eclipse. I forgot it to show you in Barstadt yesterday, but we had no time anyway. So, but uh, Profiler is, is great, you know? So, um, scalable. So, as I said, this is not that EGBs are very lean regarding uh, the memory consumptions, but there is no, no problem. And in general, if you have heavy load, let, let's, okay, this is, this is a good slide for this. Uh, you have your heavy load on your server, you have many threads but you have only view active instances of session beans. It is not that you will get, I don't know, 500,000 instances, you will get a view instances, 30, 40, and 40 instances is just nothing regarding, you know, regarding the memory. So re memory is really not an issue. In general, you have, it depends on application server. Okay, this is the answer. Okay, agreed? No, no agreed. 
EJPs are not scalable. So, and this is what I, what I told you now. The, uh, the, uh, the idea is the following. There's one thread in one instance. And for the whole life cycle, for the whole duration of the, of, of the request, the instance sticks with the thread. So there is one-to-one -one relation between the request, the thread, and the instance. And what does it mean? There are no concurrent issues. You have, you have many threads, many parallel threads, but... Pointer, yes? Yeah. Ah, no, uh, I think... Oh, it works. Yeah, it works, but how? <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> Perfect. So then we have to go back to the code. So the story is, this is the reason why, for instance, syn synchronized is not allowed in EGB, because it would be just stupid to use synchronized if you are in a single thread. Believe me, so there's nothing happens. You are synchronized and uh, there is only one thread. So, and actually this one is pretty good for, for scalability because if you have, I don't know, many cores, multi-core machine and multi-CPU machine, if you have one instance per thread, it's nothing else like functional programming a little bit. It scales very, very good. There is no limit scaling stateless session beams. And, but the problem was how it, it was solved by some. They thought, okay, it scales because of, because of pool. <laughs> and the pool is actually really bad for scalability because, uh, you know, Pooling doesn't matter in JDK 1.6. But uh, the fact that uh, every request gets an own instance, this is very good for scalability. This is like a prototype, uh, prototype scope in Spring, something like that, okay? But you have to configure. So, um, yeah. So it is service-oriented, and uh, if you like it, you can call it service-oriented, and if you are a developer, it's nothing else than procedural programming, yeah? But, uh, Folks in Germany like service-oriented architecture, so I can sell it easily as SOA. But uh, if I talk to the developers, developers say, okay, it's just a procedure. So a stateless bean with input and output. Um, so stateful session beans is the same story. They, they scale pretty well if you have something like session affinity. If you, if you try to pa passivate them and if you try to replicate the state, you can forget it completely. And uh, what you should do, you have to set, uh, um, uh, deactivate the passivation, deactivate the replication, because it doesn't matter. It doesn't work, on, uh, it doesn't, uh, work in, from a conceptual point of view, because all the replication is asynchronous. And if I um, replicate something in an asynchronous way, it is, uh, this is, this is not hey, available, because if it fails, it fails. Yeah. So um, if you, and then you only need session affinity. So you have to configure the load balancer that way that it returns to the same session over and over again and uh, try to evenly distribute the load on, 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 on the cluster nodes. And actually, all new web frameworks are stateful, by the way. Seam is very stateful, for instance. Why? The Gavin King apologized for Hibernate being stateless. So, okay, there are many, you know, lazy initialization error, proxy errors, stuff like this, because of stateless architectures, but it's another topic. Um, so, and if you, if you get a JPA persistence, everything uh, is synchronized by you. So, after every call, the state is flushed to the database and the cache is cleared. So, this happens behind the scenes without knowing that. So, every bean is executed in a pooled thread. Uh, bean instances are bound to the thread for the duration uh, of the execution, so what I said. If you would like to uh, load balance it, it's, it's okay, but the problem is, if you have load balanced clusters, there is, the problem is not, are not stateless and stateful session beams. The problem will be your persistence. Yeah? How to cache it, how to distribute your persistence. This is the bottleneck or the database, not the stateless session beams. And this is called in most application servers session affinity. So session affinity does mean I return over and over again to the same node. So, and are not scalable in my last projects, we build an architecture and to verify the architecture, we fire up the test. We had not enough load generators. This was my old Vista notebook, which was not very fast. And there is a, another notebook, which was a little bit faster because of XP, but uh, yeah. And uh, the, we had a load runner, which measured the performance. It was Glassfish and this machine, four-way machine over IOP. And um, there was a CRUD application, so this was just you know, create, read, update, delete, create, read, update, delete, over and over again. And without any optimization, we were able to achieve 500 transactions per second. And uh, it is, um, without optimization, is remarkable. So 